Okay, so here's a video I was looking for something to make today and someone kindly asked if I'd take a look at this specific amp. So we're looking at the Orange OR80 and the Helix and HX Stomp, this is called the Mandarin 80 and I think one of the most important things to do with these things is to pair them with a cab which is starting off from the point of view of being close to what the manufacturers recommend. I've looked at some of the images and stuff and they tend to be using either green back 30 watt speakers or black back 30 watt speakers so options we've got the black back 30 which is the speakers but in a 4x12 configuration green back 25s and 4x12 that's kind of close to a green back 30 what I would assume um, or matchless H30 that's a 30 watt speaker or the green back 25 so those are kind of the options I think I just tried this 4x12 black back 30 and I like that so that's what I'll go with here so we'll do a dual cab thing again and one inch distance away there and then I also want to select this again but I'll use, I don't know, uh, 421 and 57 that seems to work quite well for me in general so now we're going to pull up the Mandarin 80 and see what we can do. So I looked at the manual for this, I found a manual from about 1977 I think and here's what we get time-wise. Okay, so when you're looking at this amp, I think you're thinking of kind of British classic rock, not a terribly heavy amp or anything. Drive all the way up gets us this kind of thing. On the real amp, the controls you have, you have a drive, you have a bass, you don't have a mid, so I'll just leave that if I was trying to be keeping things authentic. You do have a treble control, so you can touch that, and there is a presence control. Well, it's not called a presence control on the amp. On the actual amp, it's called a high frequency drive, so you could touch that if you want. But the most important, I think, or you know, one of the more important controls on the amp is hidden at the very end of the parameters. So this FAC control, and the manual says this is the frequency attenuation control. With this control to the leftmost position, the amplifier operates at full frequency with no attenuation. By notching this control from left to right, you will notice that in each progressive stop, the low frequencies only are gradually filtered out of the amplified signal. Operating this control in its center range produces a strong mid-range signal. The ultimate setting of this control depends on personal taste. So, this control at the very end, probably the most important control on the amp, I think. So you can hear you're basically cutting out bass, so... The one will be the most kind of woofy, woolly sound, and the six will be the most thin sound. The manual says, you know, three or four will give you the most mid-rangey. So you might want to consider starting off with that in a different position, you know, if you're playing with humbuckers, maybe you'd start at four. If you're playing with strap pickups, you might play at, you know, start at three or two. But I imagine that control there is one that you're going to be needing to look at if you're having any issues with the amp at all, you know. So this is drive all the way up.
and then we could use that FAC to kind of thin things out a bit. If we wanted a really thick kind of tone we could move that down to one. So that's fairly interesting I think. So let's just take things back to where they start off with treble. the brightest amp. I guess we could turn up this presence if we want a bit more. So actually I think this might be a really good choice for someone who's looking for kind of that voxy it's a classic tone, you know, maybe if you're looking for Britpop kind of tone. Uh, kind of crunch tones is If you're maybe finding things are a bit woofy or whatever, I might try going up a step or two on the FAC control. And if you're finding things a bit thin, I'd go back the other direction. Again, this kind of control you might want to use to kind of go in snapshots between uh, a thicker tone for like a lead tone and then maybe something slightly thinner for your rhythm tones. But yeah, actually quite a, a versatile little thing, especially with that control at the very end there, giving you quite a wide range of tones really. Can do clean as well, I'd imagine. Let's try this with the... So with Master is at full at the moment, so... So things get really jangly when you kind of keep that presence up high and the gain down. fullest kind of clean tone. Probably going to want that. That FAC. Down at one with the, the kind of cleaner tones is really nice. So, there you go. If you're looking for some kind of really cool other kind of classic rocky tones, things, I guess this would work really nicely. For like indie. Kind of worshipy stuff. I think works really nicely. The Blackback 30 uh, with the 57 and also with the 421. I'm really enjoying that kind of tonally. You know, keeping things simple with that I think could work really nicely for some 
worshipy tones. Let's try with a memory man, maybe. That's a dog. <laughs> definitely one to look at if you're kind of looking at Brit poppy punky tones as well as looking at like classic rock tones maybe for a different flavor on like a Vox style Marshall style tone <laughs> But yeah, check that one out. I'll drop this preset into the folder and I'm going to go and create an intro with it now. But thank you. Nice to look at that. As I didn't realize that that FAC control was there at the very end of the parameters. Hugely important for this particular amp. Um, completely changes the character of it. So check that out. And yeah, really nice paired with the Blackback 30 cab. Hopefully that was vaguely interesting to one or two people um, and if it was you could feel free to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you've had good experiences with this amp or if this helps at all. And I'll catch you in another video soon. Cheers!